Nice to have you here. Lovely to be here. Thanks so much. And thank you all for coming to yeah. the whole thing and to this specifically. It's nice to see you all. What would you say was your sort of most favourite or a scene that you played or most impressive or complex? Was there anything that sort of... Um, well, I, maybe the most enjoyable time was uh, the, uh, the, the loot train scene because we had we had a month when i when i get to i got to shoot the, the dragon mm -hmm. um just because we had a month oh, yeah, that's in right. a beautiful national park in spain and just nice. and i was really hungry because i'd missed out on a lot of the battles mm -hmm. um I, he, you know he got to shoot an arrow in the battle of the black water and he got his knighthood but <laughs> he never really saw any he hadn't seen action the for a long time battle. so that was just it was just um it was just incredible to have that time to, it was like a kind of boy's dream to be able to, to have all that expertise and those people around you who are so amazing at what they do, creating a battle for you to step in and just kind of, and when it, when it happened and the camera rolled, you, you've got everything around you to create this kind of fantasy of, you know, tapping into your primal warrior. So that, that stood out for me. Mm -hmm. That and, um, yeah few other things but yeah <laughs> why are you sweating about what are, the, what are the other things no well there was there, <laughs> um there, well there was one favorite scene um just in terms of because it makes me it makes me smile so much because he wasn't expecting it but when i um i was reuniting with pod mm -hmm. and um uh jamie and brianne were in the tent and i kind of i kind of crept up behind him and um, I was teaching him how to fight and mm -hmm. stuff. Anyway, but the, we'd done it, and the director said, okay, we've got that. To, and he, then he came up, he said, just do you want to have fun with it now, Jerome? And in the, <laughs> in the middle of the scene, I, so I didn't, uh, I didn't t tell Dan what I was going to do, and I just, because I had this line, I said, come on, you're the one with the big cock, with the magic cock. <laughs> and uh, and I, grabbed his, I grabbed him by the crutch <laughs> and squeezed really hard. <laughs> in the middle of the scene <laughs> and it was just priceless the look on and and that's what they used if you watch really? that yeah that's the I'm scene gonna... they used and he's he's like like this try not to laugh <laughs> <laughs> he like couldn't oh believe but it's, it's perfect because that's what pod pod probably would have done <laughs> i'm anyway. going to watch that scene again and with yeah, a completely worth, new what, eyes it's worth, worth going back i can remember when i did that scene um in season six which was kind of a moment I had where I was like, wow, I mean, Game of Thrones was when Bran's in the vision and there are literally, there were like a hundred extras in full zombie gear, you know, again, not CGI and all the prosthetics. And then I'm walking through the middle of them in this huge quarry, which admittedly isn't hugely glamorous, but the, you know, there's snow as far as the eye can see and this big weirwood tree at the back and all these huge stone pillars. Um, and yeah, walking through that and then you get there and then there was the Night King and his sort of honor guard of, uh, of, of White Walkers, and then he grabbed me. I mean, that was a real moment where it's like, wow, the production, this, this production is, you know, unlike anything else. But Vlad has to get up. Usually your call is at about, you know, 6 a.m. in the morning, 7 a.m. in the morning. Vlad's will be at about 1 a.m. That's when he'll get picked up and he'll arrive at set oh and he'll spend God. five hours in a chair getting all of it put on. He has contact lenses put in, special contact lenses. And what, at one point, something got trapped in them, and like his retina got scratched. At one point, he's like he's been through the wars, the poor guy. Oh my god! Um, and then at the end of the day, when you just sort of take the dirt off your face and go home, he'll be there for another sort of hour and a half, two hours when they take it all off. Wow! Um, Impressive. So yeah, yeah, not CGI. Not CGI. Not a, did you? And uh, do you have any funny anecdotes? Because it's always very sort of you know very elegant and everything but it would be yeah. nice to have some funny little anecdotes yeah. in the castle black set which is which is filmed in a quarry about an hour outside of belfast so when you see the wall most of it is cgi but the first say 100 feet of the wall is real ah. is real quarry face okay. and, they, and they paint it white to make it look like the wall but it's real and you can go there and see it wow and when and and of course to get to the top of the wall in the show there's a lift that you take from the castle black courtyard up to the top of the wall because he's like 700 feet but the first Good exercise <laughs> yeah the first 100 feet of that lift is real and kit and myself were in that lift once about to do a take of us coming down into the castle black courtyard and me and kit were in, in a lift that was no bigger than say one of these little panels here it was kind of four foot by four foot so we were stuck in really close next to each other 
and the lift got stuck. The lift got stuck <laughs> about 100, 100 feet above the ground with me and Kit in, in this tight little space for maybe an hour, well, an hour and a half. got very close there, didn't you? A lot of yeah. people would pay for that. Yeah, well, exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, what an experience. The way we got down was they had to, they had to, a guy had to climb up the outside of the lift, so he had to climb by hand 100 feet up and let the brake of the lift off <laughs> piece by piece, so we kind of judded all the way down yeah. like this. Yeah, it was terrifying. Terri were you, okay, it was terrifying. Well, the but thing the was that we, we were laughing about it in the lift. We were in there going, oh, the, 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 the kind of mess we get into sometimes, how funny. And then we looked, we looked down, we looked down out of the lift door and saw the entire crew in the courtyard like that. <laughs> and that's when we kind of found it less, less funny. funny. Yeah. Really worried about you. Can you tell us if in Game of Thrones there's things that you learnt for life, lessons that you sort of took with you, things that... You, I mean, you have friendships for life. Was there anything that you sort of... I mean, you went, got back into acting. You were like, acting's not for me. I, I don't want to have anything to do with it, but... I wasn't quite like that. No, I thought, because I, I read this interview, I it thought maybe like were... it'll leave me alone. Yeah. Or I'll let it go. Okay. Um, um, but maybe for me personally, in terms of what it's... I found, because I found it hard, I think, in my life to integrate my own path and then acting. It felt like there were two separate worlds. Mm -hmm. And one felt unreal, in a sense, and the other felt more real, and I felt it's helped me to integrate the two together so I can more comfortably be in the profession and feel like I'm not pulled around all over the place and I can be myself. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it's, it's kind of helped me trust, if you like, Trust the, um, yeah, just trust. But do you think it was necessary for you to sort of get out of that world? And you, I think you bought a house in, in Wales and you sort of revamped it all just to get take that step away? Uh, well, yeah, it was necessary. That's what I wanted to do. Yeah. I, I've, I had had some, um, a kind of funny kind of fame thrown at me through singing songs and I was in that business and it all felt very unreal and mm -hmm. ungrounded and hence I wanted to take some time out and be in the country and connect to my Celtic roots and it, I was just kind of uh, craving a certain type of reality because mm -hmm. the show business can be, it's a funny old if you're not grounded, it can pull you all over the place. And Absolutely. So I think that it did, it did really serve me taking that time out, and I feel kind of, I feel very grateful for the, for acting now, and extremely grateful for Game of Thrones for all the, for all the gifts that it's brought. Yeah. Lovely. You guys? I, th I think I think the thing that I've learned <clears throat> is, as I said before, going out of that very insular, small drama school environment where you're acting in small groups with your friends to go in into this huge cast full of people from all sorts of different backgrounds and all sorts of different types of people, that it's about teamwork and it's about how much can be achieved in a team and a team of quite, of quite disparate people as well. You know, you look around our cast sometimes and you think this is the only show that you could all be in together, really. If you take, if you take act, you know, you've got actors from the north of England, you've got actors from Denmark, you've got actors from Norway, We were wondering, Ireland. is there any Americans in it? Peter there... Dinklage. Oh, he, oh, that's right. Peter Dinklage he's is, the only one, isn't he? He's it? the only one, <laughs> but the rest of us, we're all kind of European. There's, there's French actors, there's actors from the Netherlands and, yeah. and all, all of these different places. And, and we're all coming together and we're all filling in our little piece of this jigsaw. And we're all working together as a team to create this huge success. And we all need each other and we all play our part. And it's just a really nice thing about teamwork from all these different backgrounds and all these different places. So, you know, the lesson I've learned is not wanting to make this too political, but we're stronger together. Uh, that's a lovely thing to say, though. Absolutely.